In this video, I'm going to go over some of the basic mechanics of lifting. Let's begin with the review of torque. When we are talking about torque, it's first important to go over some of the components that are necessary to create torque. First, we have to have a lever or a rigid body. Next, we have to have a pivot point or an axis of rotation. Third, we're going to apply a force that's some distance from that axis of rotation. That's going to cause a torque, also known as a moment of force, or moment for short. This is the turning effect of that force. A new concept I'd like to introduce here is the concept of a moment arm. The moment arm is actually the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the force vector. The moment arm and the lever arm can be considered synonymous if the force is at right angles to the lever arm. Otherwise, they're going to be different. For the purposes of this video, we are going to concentrate on the moment arm. Now, how can we increase torque? Well, if we increase the force, we're going to increase the torque. And therefore, a larger force equals a larger torque. Next, we can apply that same force, but further away from the axis of rotation. This is going to end up increasing the moment arm and will also therefore increase the torque. So, if we have a larger moment arm, we're also going to have a larger torque. Conversely, if that force is moved closer to the axis of rotation, we are going to decrease the length of the moment arm, and we are also going to decrease the size of the torque. So a smaller moment arm equals a smaller torque. Now let's talk about torque that occurs about the joints of the body. We can apply an external force to one of the segments in the system. In this case, it's going to be the proximal end of the femur. If we're talking about rotations that occur about the knee joint, we will see that this external force here will create an external torque, which is going to be in the counterclockwise direction. Therefore, we are going to need a muscle torque in the clockwise direction in order to counter this external torque. Therefore, we can say that the muscle torque has to be equal and opposite to the external torque. Now, what exactly do I mean by the external torque? What is it and where does it come from? In order to understand that, we need to talk briefly about this idea of inertial forces and external forces. So I'm going to pose the question, what are the external forces and what makes them larger? Let's consider having a barbell. I am going to be applying a force to that barbell or more correctly, the sum of all forces applied to that barbell is going to create an acceleration that's proportional to the mass. This is Newton's second law, where the force equals the mass times the acceleration. But if a force is being applied to the barbell, Newton's third law tells us there's an equal and opposite force being applied from the barbell back onto the thing that's applying the force to the barbell in the first place. This is called an inertial force shown here in yellow. Now don't forget that we also have the force due to gravity that's pulling the barbell towards the center of Earth. These two forces together are going to be combined, referred to as the external forces, for the purposes of this video. So when we ask ourselves what are the external forces, those external forces are going to be the combination of gravity and the inertial forces. And I should also say for this video that we are going to ignore the gravitational forces on the body segment. Next, we have to ask what makes them larger. Well, larger masses, or larger upward accelerations, are going to increase the external forces. Now let's visit the idea of moment arms within the body. And we're going to ask ourselves what makes the moment arms longer. Well, first, I don't think it's hard to imagine that if you have longer segments, you're going to have longer moment arms. And therefore, it's going to be harder for somebody who is taller to lift than it is for somebody who is shorter. 
Additionally, if we look at the skeletal configuration here on the left-hand side of the screen, if we see the external force, we see that that's going to be some distance away from the axis of rotation of the knee. However, if we were to squat deeper, we would see that that same force is going to be further away from the axis of rotation of the knee. And therefore, the moment arm is not going to be the same throughout the range of motion. So if we ask ourselves what makes the moment arm longer, again, one obvious one would be longer segments. But larger segment angles from the vertical are also going to lead to longer moment arms. And when that segment angle is 90 degrees from the vertical, the moment arm of the external force will be its largest. So now let's visit this whole idea of how the moment arms are changing throughout the range of motion. In the first case, the skeleton here is mostly upright. And if we, for example, say that he has a barbell on his shoulders, we will see that an external force is more or less going to go through the center of the hip joint, through the center of the knee joint, and through the center of the ankle joint. There won't be much torque that's being created about either joint, and the force is being transmitted essentially through the bones. Now the skeleton is going to assume a squat position. That same force being applied at the same location across his shoulders will now increase the moment arm at the hip, at the knee, and at the ankle. And again, as a general rule, the deeper the squat, the larger those moment arms are going to be. We also have to consider how trunk position may play into this whole idea of the length of the moment arms. In our first case here, again, we have a barbell being applied at the shoulders. You can see that the skeleton has a fairly significant amount of trunk lean and therefore, there's going to be a large moment arm at the hip, a smaller moment arm at the knee, and a fairly large moment arm at the ankle. If we contrast that with a more upright position, with a barbell still applied at the shoulders, we will see that that's going to decrease the moment arm at the hip, it's going to increase the moment arm at the knee, and it's going to decrease the moment arm at the ankle. So that same force will have very different torques being created about the joints, depending on the posture that's assumed by the body. Not only the depth of the particular squat, but also the trunk position will dictate what those moment arm lengths will be. And again, in general, a deeper squat will have larger moment arms and therefore require more torque about the joints. And an upright position will decrease the moment arm at the hip, it will increase the moment arm at the knee, and it will decrease the moment arm at the ankle. Now, with that said, let's talk about a few different lifting techniques. Before doing so, it's important that we cover two rules to lift safely. And I will talk about these rules in the context of a true or false type question. And that question is, you should always bend the knees and lift with the legs. Well, the two rules that we have for lifting safely are going to be one, to keep the load close to the spine. If we keep the load close to the spine, then we decrease the moment arm of that load about the spine. Next, we wanna make sure that we keep the curves of the spine. This is important because the natural curvature of the spine is the position in which the spine can handle compressive loads the best. If the spine is excessively flexed and the curve flattens, or if the spine is excessively extended and the curve is exacerbated, this will alter the force transmission through the spine. So with that said, our first technique here is the squat technique. And with the squat technique, as the old adage says, we are going to bend the knees and we are going to lift with the legs. Now the question I pose to you is, should we always do so? The answer to that is surprisingly no. If the load is fairly wide, we will not be able to keep the load close to the body, and therefore we will increase the torque about the spine. 
So therefore, it's not always the case where we want to bend the knees and lift up the legs. That brings us to our next technique, which is the deadlift or stoop style of lift. With the stoop style or deadlift style of lifting, the load can remain close because we're essentially just going to be hinging at the hips. This is an acceptable, and in fact, it's even a preferable way of lifting a load, particularly if the load is wide. However, we have to make sure when we're performing the deadlift technique that we are keeping the curvature of the spine. A lot of people cannot do so because they don't have the hamstring flexibility. And if they don't have the hamstring flexibility, they'll try to increase their range of motion by flexing at the spine. But again, that will violate rule number two. So when lifting safely, we have to decide whether we want to use a squat technique or a stoop technique based upon the size of the load and the range of motion available at the joints. Finally, we have the golfer's pickup, which I like to think of as a single leg deadlift. This technique is especially useful when we have a light load that we have to pick up because it's very energy efficient. It would cost a lot, metabolically speaking, to always do a deep squat to pick something up off the floor, particularly if it's light. So when we have a light technique, the golfer's pickup is an acceptable technique for picking something up off the floor. But again, we have to make sure that we can keep the load close and keep the curvature of the spine because even a relatively small load can cause injuries to the spine. Finally, let's compare the squat and the stoop technique, or the squat and the deadlift technique. On the left, we see the squat technique, and on the right, we see the stoop or the deadlift technique. Now, I remove the box and I move the force vector up closer to the body, which is totally acceptable to do, just so that we can see what the effect on the moment arms are going to be. And as we can see here with the squat technique, the external force is going to create a flexion torque about the knee and a flexion torque about the hip. And so we are going to need muscular torques in order to counteract those external torques that are being created. Now let's look at the right hand side of the stoop technique couple things I'd like you to note. First, we will see that with the stoop technique or the deadlift technique, we are going to have a larger moment arm about the hip and therefore for the same load, we're going to have a greater torque requirement about the hip. Next, look at where the force vector is in relation to the axis of rotation at the knee. You can see here that the force vector is actually going to create an extensor torque and we are going to need a muscular flexor torque in order to counteract that. So not only do we have greater demands at the hip during the stoop technique, but we also have different demands at the knee. And there you have it. In this video, I first reviewed the concept of torque. We introduced a new concept, that of the moment arm as opposed to the lever arm, which is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the force vector. We then saw how, even for the same force, increasing or decreasing the moment arm will increase or decrease the torque requirements about a particular joint. I also introduced the idea of an inertial force and how when we are lifting, we have to consider both the inertial as well as the gravitational forces as the external force. After doing so, we noticed how posture affects the moment arms about the various different joints. And I demonstrated that if the segment angles are further away from the vertical, that is going to increase the torque about the joints. We also saw how manipulating the position of the trunk affected the moment arms at the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Finally, we looked at three different lifting techniques, the squat, the stoop, and the golfer's pickup. And we discussed scenarios when you would use each one.